Welcome to Sweden for the opening round of the 2010 World Rally Championship and welcome to Motors TV. I'm Simon Hill. We're delighted to be bringing you all 13 rounds of this exciting and spectacular series. But it starts in temperatures of minus 22 and this man, Sebastian Loeb, is aiming to try and make it seven world titles. Challenged and missed out by one point last year was Mika Hörveren and back with a real challenge this year is Petter Solberg. Kimi Raikkonen, the 2007 Formula One world champion, will now attack the snow in Sweden and the rest of the championship as part of the Citroen junior team. And packed by popular demand, always great to see, twice world champion and winner of 30 rallies, Marcus Gronholm is back on the scene. We're gonna visit rallies with snow, with gravel and with tarmac, but we start in Sweden, three days, 21 stages and 345 competitive kilometres of action. At the end of last year, it was just one point. Mikko Hervenen lost out by a scant point. And Citroën not only took the driver's title, but also the manufacturer's title for the fifth time. Last year, we had a, a, bit, uh, a difficult season uh, with... Uh with uh, some, uh, some, some troubles, some mistakes, but uh, um, it's, it was all, always different things, so it's difficult to say what we can change. Uh, for me, I've done a good job, I've done a mistake, I do one every year, so I hope I will not do it here. It's kind of a on the edge of starting the new season, I've been waiting for this since GP last year, so uh, I'm really glad we are here. Do you like the snow? What are the stages like this year? They are okay, but it's, uh, there's going to be lots of gravel and it's a bit funny, like, the winter has been really good, very cold, lots of snow here, like in, in Sweden, but it's been too cold, there's no ice on the roads, it's just light snow on top of icy gravel and uh, that's going to clear up really fast and then it's just, that's going to be gravel, so uh, it, it's really hard for the tyres. Can you explain to people that have never driven on snow and ice what it, what it feels like? It feels really good, uh, because with the tyre we have, we, we really have a... Uh, a good grip, quite similar to the, what we have on, on gravel and, and that makes it uh, very exciting because driving so fast on, on ice and snow is uh, an incredible feeling so and you have to slide a lot, you have to, you have to throw the car a long time before the corner and so you make some big slide at high speed, it's, it's really, really good. So a very, very early start for the crews, 5.30 in the morning taking them on a very long road section and then the three stages of the day each repeated the Viggen stage, the Torntrop stage and the Likanes stages they're the three stages the drivers will have they've also taken part in a super special and they will take that again at the end of the day back at the Karlstad rally headquarters very similar to where the rally was taking part in 2008 the last time the rally was run on the World Rally Championship won by Yarimari Latvala Drivers and crews and cars warming up. It's going to be absolutely crucial that the drivers are taking a start which gives them good position as they go into the second stages. I feel ready, so we'll see. I know it will not be an easy rally for me, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Sebastian Loeb about to attack the stage first of the proper stages of the rally, having taken the super special the previous evening, six times world champion. The rally fan will know that already. And interesting, the choice of the drivers, whether to use the launch control system or not. Some drivers feeling that the feel that you, you need for these kind of conditions is better represented by the driver's own decision. But let's on ride right on board with the most successful rally driver of all time, guided as always by Daniel Elena through stage two.
Ouvre long et ferme 140 long en ciel. Ouvre long et ferme 140 long en ciel. 400 mètres. 400 mètres ciel tout droit. 130 mètres. Ciel sur attention 40 mètres. Droite 140 moins minot. Sup. Pour 130 mètres, attention, droite 90 moins. Droite 90 moins. Et gauche 120 bon long. 130 mètres, droite 130 plus. Et gauche 130 bon fond en ciel. 180 mètres. Devant arbre, attention, gauche 120 long. Et droite 130 plus. As always, Sebastian Loeb, silky smooth with his driving style. But this by Mikko Hervin and so determined he said he's going for an all-out attack this year in 2010. Ford have put all of the support behind him and told Yari Mari Latvala he will play second fiddle, he will be the number two driver behind Hervinen. And it means that he has a lot less pressure on him in terms of having to worry about his teammate, just having to worry about trying to go out to win rallies. Let's look on the virtual spectator, how they compare. Danny Sordo leading the rally after his win on the Super Special on the Thursday evening. You can see going into the stages, the uh, first split, seeing a difference of 0.8. Ervin and Loeb and Sordo as they go into the second split at 16.6 kilometers. This time though, 0.4 of a second slower than Ervin and his Loeb, 2.4 seconds quicker than Sordo. Coming to the end of the stage where the final part of the stage takes him into the Swedes referred to as a trotting track where ponies normally head round, well, slightly different kind of horses, but nonetheless, it's the same story as ever. We see Sebastian Loeb completing the stage very neatly and tidily. A bit sideways over the line. As ever, a job well done. Start of the day for low. Sebastian, that's the end of the first proper stage of the 2010 season. At 16.6 k's, 0 0.4 behind Miko, so it's not too bad. No, it's okay, but uh, the conditions were good to be first on the road. It's full ice, so it's no problem to to be first. But uh, it's so cold that the ice is very hard, and uh, finally the grip is uh, it's not so so high, and uh, the car is a bit nervous. Not not easy. Uh, I've done a quite a good stage, but not easy. Oh. I'm feeling that the studs on the tyres not digging into the ice because the ice was so hard. Doesn't affect these guys, they're here to support the, uh, the uh, Scandinavian drivers and this man making his uh, full World Championship Rally debut, Kimi Raikkonen, did the rally in uh, the Arctic Rally recently and had a, a good run, had an off early in the rally but managed to get back on and put in some good stage times, getting relatively close to Danny Sordo who dominated the event. But for Raikkonen you can see a big cloud of snow ahead of him and that and it's because, because uh, Khaled al Qasimi had gone off ahead of him and uh, was only a few metres ahead. And you can see the problem, much like on a gravel stage when it's very dusty and you're following another car. Similar sort of problems in terms of visibility, although a very, very different set of circumstances. Kai Lindstrom calling the notes. Interesting, Kai formally, of course, with Tommy Wakanen. Very calmly working hard with Kimi Raikkonen. You can see that Kasimi, Al Kasimi coming through the last part of the stage and the distinctive Red Bull livery. Citroen Junior team car of Kimi Raikkonen, not that far behind, getting a little bit wide. Very soft snow on the edges of the course. That's what a lot of the drives were finding meaning. It's difficult to find grip all the way out to the edge. First proper stage in a world rally car. The disappointment though being behind Khaled after it being off. Yeah, I think. Uh... More than the halfway, he was in front of us, and you cannot see anything. So, not a good start, but uh, what can you do? I mean, uh, there's no way to try to follow closely, so we just needed to slow down. Are you, are you happy with the car, though, and your performance until that point? 
Oh, it was quite uh, tricky on beginning, but uh, I mean, we need to get a bit more more mileage, then it's going to get better, but uh, hopefully next stage we can run clear. Okay, like Back in the championship with uh, part of the Terminator team, running as uh, the five-time winner of the event, of course, Marcus Gorham, twice world champion in 2000, 2002, one of 30 rallies. Playing himself back in slightly gently, said the car felt uh, better in terms of power and handling than when he last remember driving the Ford Focus. But uh, very rusty on snow, especially having had some testing. Tested the Ford S2000 car recently as well. But this is what it looked like at the end of stage two. Low by one second from Sordo, Herven and Lapalorgier, Gronome, Hodsberg, Henning Solberg just ahead of Petter Sobo, who had a disaster on the super special stage on the Thursday night. He spun and lost an awful lot of time, dropped way down the order. The fans though, enjoying their barbecues, keeping warm and making sure that they're ready for the action. When the world's top drivers, the world's top cars pass through the stage here in Sweden. So action now at the end of stage two. As we said, the lead just one second for Sebastian Loeb over Danny Sordo. And it means that the, the pressure is on for the Spaniard to try to keep himself in touch. And it is Sebastian Loeb who once again is attacking from the front at the moment. The snow conditions being, as Loeb described, a good layer of snow with some relatively hard ice underneath. In fact, the local car club had been watering down the uh, early stages of the day to try to make sure there was a good base of ice, try to avoid a situation whereby the gravel that's obviously underneath the ice is uh, dug into by the studs on the tyres. But it was uh, a good run through from Loeb, slightly quicker than Sordo again. From Mikko Hervan, I know. Fairly cautious start. He's starting to attack a little bit more as they go into stage three. Ended up 2.8 seconds away from Loeb. As we ride on board with Danny Sordo, who had a tremendously encouraging start on the Thursday Super Special. A little bit quicker than Ogier, who was second quickest on that Super Special. Never been any doubt about Sordo's pace on tarmac. There has been some questions about the supporting role he's had to pay to Sebastian Loeb, having occasionally had to work in order to make sure that the team's working well. Other drivers here will be using some of the snow banks to tailor the car, will just clip into it. Being careful not to hit it too hard, otherwise it'll flip the front round and possibly get stuck in a snow bank, as has happened many times before. In fact, that's what happened to Khalid al Qasimi on that first stage of the day. Again, you can see Sordo using those snow banks. Some of the drivers are concerned that if it's too warm, you can see the sunshine blasting through, even though the day started at almost minus 22 degrees. If the banks are too warm, then they're too soft and the car can get buried in there. But a great run through from Sordo, just 0.8 of a second away from Sebastian Loeb. Yarimari Lapfalo, the last winner of the Swedish Rally in 2008. That was his debut win, made him the youngest ever winner of a WC event. Doubtlessly, how, doubtless how fast this guy, and interesting, this car is the same car that he was rallying and he had that enormous accident in Portugal last year. 12 rolls. The guys at um, M Sport have reshelled the car and rebuilt it. And effectively, he's back in 
the car that he was using last year. Has been told to play a supporting role to Mikko Hervan and throughout the 2010 season. Fans braving the cold weather, enjoying themselves, lots of log fires and lots of beer to be seen as Sebastian Ogier, no doubt about his commitment. Came a lot more consistent toward the latter part of 2010 after a mid-season blip. And many fancy him to be the heir apparent to Sebastian Loeb's crown as uh, top French driver and possibly top rally driver in the world. That's right on board with Ogier. Roger ending up 12.5 seconds away from Loeb on that stage and going into stage four. You can see Mikko Hovenen really starting to fight, of course, the teams and crews have been back to service now and had a chance to make some changes. Danny Sordo again still concentrating on the gap to both Herven and Loeb. Let's look at the times as they come towards the end of the stage. 9.54.7 for Herven and... And 59.3, so 4.6 seconds, the gap. Hervonen ended up quickest overall on that stage. This is what it's done, quickest Hervonen uh, on the stage. This is what it's done overall, low by 4.1 seconds. Now Sordo third, Latvala in fourth. Oshie, Gronome, Odsberg, Henning Solberg, Petter Solberg still in the top ten. And Britain's Matthew Wilson in the Stobart Ford with Monster running out in the end of the top 10 looking for a good points finish. New point scoring system of course uh, in line with F1. Is, is doing well. Uh, I was very happy with the condition of, of the road in the, in the morning because uh, I, did, I expected being first will not be good and I expected to lose some time and finally the conditions are really good so no problem. Uh, we are leading at the moment but only four seconds so it's a, a big battle with Miko and, and Danny and uh, Everything is going well for the moment. I don't know, I wasn't completely happy in, uh, in the first two stages on my driving and just didn't have a good good feeling with, with the car, but uh, it's better now, so uh, hopefully I can carry on like this. Why is it better? What have you changed? Uh, just dampers a bit and, and send it if tried kind of older program what I used last year. And it felt a bit better in, in stages, so uh, well, hopefully I can <coughs> stay close or take some time out. The two first stages today, number two and three, was really perfect condition, full ice and everything, very good. But the, the last one was really difficult and uh, the snow was very, very soft and we, we had some rise and the, the car is understeer and oversteer and all the time it's changing. It was, was really, really difficult in this condition. Maybe for the second lap will be very, very difficult. Take this one. I'll take these two. So the second run of the day through the stage is going to be significant because the conditions are doubtlessly changing. They come to the Lekanas stage, they ran early in the morning, at around about 8.20 now, much later in the day. And of course all of the cars have run through the stage, so possibility that the tyres will be cutting through the snow, through the ice and into gravel. Globe though, focusing on potentially trying to extend his lead. The end of stage four, 4.1 seconds over Mikko Hervonen. Now, of course, running first on the road could be significant advantage or disadvantage. Too early to say. They come through these stages for the second time, which you'll see when you look at the time. The question everyone wants to know is that the split times are not great. 9.6 down on Mikko. What's wrong? Nothing. Uh, road condition. It's a... Uh... A lot of ruts with snow in it, so I expected this condition and I knew I have no chance. So basically you just backed off to conserve your car? No, I tried my as much as I could, but uh, I took more risks than in the first pass, but uh, even the time is not good. 
So Foyle up, Foyle up, and Hervenen in the Fords. A chance to really put the pressure on the Citroen factory team. These changes that Hervenen has made seem to have worked. The charge through stage five, looking comfortable and looking much quicker. He's certainly looking like he's going to consolidate the advantage he had at the splits. Coming to the end of the stage, ends up fastest on stage five. Mikko, I've just shown you the times. You've 10.8 quicker, and there was not a smile. Yeah, this might cost me a lot. You know, it could be conditions were so bad that. You know, I might have been too hot for the tyres and Sebastian was saving his tyres. That could explain it, so... Uh, we'll see how the next two stages go. So we heard from Sordo earlier saying he had some real problems with the car trying to balance both understeer and oversteer. Never a good thing for any driver. Let's watch if we can see evidence of that on board. Again, just a gentle touch of the snow bank drivers working on the technique whereby instead of turning into the skid an opposite lot like you normally would very slight overshoot shoot there and they tend to turn away from it to make sure that the front doesn't get pulled into the bank one of the biggest problems can be then overheating with snow stuck into the radiator so sort of just gently touching the bank looking extremely good on the splits and looking like he could but in a very impressive time on stage five Lenta, derecha 5 lenta, 5 lenta, para que queda 6 rápida en rasante, 10 situar, derecha 7 se cierra poco, 20, y derecha 7, 10 situar, pero le queda 4, poco lenta, corta, 10 fuera, y queda 2 lenta, 2 lenta, 20, rasante y derecha 4 rápida, 10 situar, izquierda así rápida, se estrecha poco. Y acaba 7 en rasante 20. Frenar derecha 1, muy lenta mano. 1, muy lenta mano. 1 lámpara, de recuperar otro. 30 vistos. See the drivers breaking exceptionally hard into some of the slower corners, trying to make those studs dig into the surface, dig into the ice and give themselves more grip. And look at the time difference between Sordo and Loeb. 11.48.5, 11.42.1, 6.4 .1, seconds faster than Sebastian Loeb. And that not only moves him ahead of Loeb, now means he's uh, in a solid second position overall. Look at the difference, just four tenths between Sordo and Loeb, but Hermann takes the rally lead. That Valogier, Gronholm Solberg, Henning Solberg, that is Wilson, Mads Osberg, and Pierre Gunnar Anderson in one of the S2000 cars rounding out the top 10. So, some real good interest from the local Swedish fans. They'll be cheering him on. But they'll be watching an outstanding battle for the overall win between Sebastian Loeb, Mikko Hermanen, and between Danny Sword. Welcome back to Sweden. This man, Kimi Raikkonen, 2007 world champion. How's he enjoying his first serious competition in the World Rally Championship? I mean, I mean both of them are top level motorsport, but uh, completely different, different sports. Really, uh, driving, the atmosphere, 
the people, uh, uh, the conditions where we are is, is completely different from Formula One. So, um, okay, you have a steering wheel for four tires and a pedal. So in that way, it's, it's still similar to but uh, much more challenging, I would say, in, in, in rally than in Formula One. In Formula One, okay, it can change, but it changes only big time when it starts raining and you're in slicks, but apart from that, it's more or less the same lap by lap. So uh, in rally, every corner can be different, and usually this. So um, that's what makes it challenge, and at least uh, for myself, I have a lot of respect for them because once I've tried, I know how difficult it is to do everything as well as they would do. So uh, they, they're fighting for, for tens uh, per 20 kilometers, so it's, it's, not, it's not easy. I have uh, the little experience from the rally that I have, so I would say that the snow is definitely the most difficult one. Uh, the gravel was uh, surprisingly more similar than, uh, than tarmac, so uh, I think it will be much easier in those, those events in, in, in gravel and tarmac. Of course, in gravel you have a different conditions. I have only, only noticed or done in one condition in Finland, so... Uh, but the snow is difficult. I mean, you go a little bit offline and you're in a soft snow and uh, uh, it's, it's not easy to get it back. So that's where the, where the, the experience really counts in, in the snow. And, uh, and we just need to try to make as, as, as little uh, mistakes what we can and uh, try to go, go quickly. Having me go quicker during 2010 will be Kai Lindstrom, his co-driver, working with Kimi on making his notes and helping him yeah, to understand them. Yeah, from one I never liked it. I shouted it back to them, but unfortunately this time we, I have to know, uh, listen it and uh, do what they say. But uh, it, it takes time for sure. I mean, it, it can go very easily and well, but then sometimes you have a, you put too much effort in driving, and usually then you make the mistake. So you need to 100 percent. 100% concentration all the time to make sure that those things don't happen because it usually don't end up very well in, in, in this sport. It happens easily in, in the rally when you make a mistake. It usually don't really give you give you a second chance. So it's, it's a different story from Formula One. Very different story for Kimi Raikkonen indeed, but clearly enjoying his time. This is what it looks like at the end of stage five. Herven and leading from Sordo ahead of Loeb, just four tenths behind. And Latvala is still in with a shout and getting quicker as the stages go through. Mikko Herbert and those so disappointed to have lost the World Championship by just one point. And he's fighting also not only to try and win his 14th rally in the World Rally Championship, but also potentially to help Ford become the most successful rally team of all time in terms of total wins. Currently tied with Lancia on 73 wins and at the moment. All out approach. Didn't seem evident at the start of the day, but seems to be certainly coming to the fore now. Vasen nopee, jarru neljä, vasen hidas tiukka, kirra pahasti. Seitsemän, vasen eri yli nypy, menee ja käännä, kivi sisällä. Sata, vasen eri käännä, 150. Pikku nyppy vasen laita oikee, täys miinus, rytky seitsemän, ja rytky vasen täys yli nypy. Kyt, huomio huomio muista, oikee eri yli nypy, jarru kuusi, lyhyt vasen yli nypy, jarru neljä, pitkä oikee, serpo. Aukee. Kuus. Lyhyt oikee, oiva yli nypyn. Jarruk seitsemän, oikee nopee, tiukka. Pidä kolme, vase eri kirra vähän. Heti oikee loiva, kolme, lyhyt vase eri yli nypy, mene sata. Oikee täys miinus sumpuun ja pikku nyppy täys 210 yli. Kaks ollaan perässä. Marcus Gronholm back on the World Rally Championship for a limited program. But, uh, Gradually playing himself back in and starting to get more and more into Rally Sweden, of course, has won this event five times, incredibly. And after Loeb, he's the next most successful driver in terms of wins on 30 wins.
driving for Team Terminator. He's in one of the cars that's still prepared by the uh, Stobot 4 team. But a problem, just 2.3 k's into the stage, sudden loss of power. Electrical problem of some sort, slowing him down and dropping him all the way out of the order down to around 30th position. Vainly trying to get the car started again. For Kimi Raikkonen, we heard how much he's finding a challenge in rallying, especially driving on snow and ice. To make sure he's listening very carefully to Kyle Lindstrom's notes. One of the biggest challenges, he said, and then this time just outbreaks itself. Big lock up going down the hill, it looks like that soft snow on the edge of the road that he was talking about in his interview has got him stuck. And he ended up losing a total of 26 minutes. Now, this is a scene you wouldn't have expected to see. The 2007 Formula One world champion getting his little shovel out and having to help dig himself out of trouble. Eventually the crew back into the rally. And now just focusing on experience. For this man, though, Sordo, it's been an outstanding day so far. And let's watch as he runs through the stage. See how balanced the car looks in light of what he was saying to us earlier. First part of the stage looks very good on the splits. I mean, just to see how the second part looks. In fact, it looks like possibly he's lost some time. There is the gap to his teammate. It's 1.8 seconds, so another stunning drive from Danny Sordo. Danny just lost a little bit of time there to Sebastian, but the top three is very, very close. Yeah, uh, really close. Uh, the stage maybe was better than the, than the other one. It's really fast, really nice, but I don't know the feel at the end of the stage. I lost power in the engine. I don't know what's happened, but the feel is the car is not, not pushing. I don't know. We will see now. Maybe explains the... Uh, what seemed to be a slight loss of pace towards the end. Still only 1.8 seconds off though, but this man, Gary Murray Lackvalo, is pushing very hard now. Gained some changes to his car. Made it service seems to have worked. And he's pushing his teammate Herven extremely hard, of course. A former winner of this rally in 2008. It was his first win. Um, it's interesting to see how his style differs from his teammates. Mika Antila giving very, very specific notes, much more aggressive in his note giving. It's uh, said over the winter that's one of the changes they've made. And it certainly seems to be working. Great use of the snow bank there from Latvola to bring the car around. And that is what it means. 6.3 seconds faster than Hervenen takes the stage win. That's a good stage time, Yari. Fastest first time this weekend. Yeah, it's uh, it was a clear run for us. Uh, we did a little change for the car before the stage. We went actually a little bit harder with the low speed at the rear, and we lifted the car up. I think so. We got uh, maybe a little bit of benefit from that. So stiffening the dampers and changing the ride height seems to have worked. But Mick Over now has only 5.1 seconds. Ahead of Loeb from Sordo. Latvala now 21 seconds. He's taken some big time out of Sordo there. And Ogier still in with the shout. Henning Solberg rounding out the top six. Frenchman Sebastian Ogier 
has had some pretty spectacular rallies in 2010. Started the year very well winning a Monte Carlo rally. But here at the same corner, we've seen uh, drivers have problems at before. As an overshoot, manages to find reverse. But this on stage five, this was. This, uh, we have lost uh, an awful lot of time as a result. Distinctive new livery for Peter Solberg. Has two Citroen C4s in the head of Solberg World Rally team. New livery. Mad prop overshoots on a fast right. Fortunately, spectators are there. Next through, we see Matthew Wilson, Stobuck Ford. Man. To get himself regularly scoring points and onto the podium in 2010, gets past Solberg in the stage. Martin has ever calmly calling the notes. And again, a lock up downhill and runs very wide. Someone behind us. And there was a clunk there, wasn't just going for reverse gear. There was some contact. And here is the evidence. Peter Solberg locking up the same place, the rear of his car just clipping the back of Wilson's. Well, that, where it, Kimi Räikkönen, and it maybe used to be a bit of contact from doing circuit racing, but not for those guys. Matt Wilson, of course, did some circuit racing in 2003, and interestingly, was in the same team as Kimi Räikkönen in manner of competition. All at the same time as Osberg has the same problem as Räikkönen. Sorry, as Ogier going through that fast right. Let's hear from Matt Coming together, whoops. Well, he's not happy at all. Matthew, you're not very happy about something that's damaged to the back of the car. What's going on? He hit us. He hit us. Uh, he went off at 12 k's. Got back on, we followed him. We were in his snow dust for ages. And then he overshot a junction. We got past. We stalled in the braking. Just starting it up again. Next thing, a clout up the And, uh, yeah, it's damaged the suspension. Okay, you're, he's got, he's got, you're okay, yeah. We had to understand, went off the road and he lost a lot of time and then he went off in straight in front of us. Uh, I, I don't have any studs and I hit him. That's why the damage is on the back, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm trying too hard. I just have to drive. Always honest, always throws his heart on his sleeve to Solberg. No studs on the tyres, he said, that could be the problem. A lot of great ambience at uh, Torsby. One of the uh, initiatives from World Rally is to make the series more accessible to spectators, and that certainly seems to be the case here in Sweden. Lots of fans, lots of drivers making themselves very amenable. Still, it's all about that fight at the very front of the first round of the World Rally Championship here in Sweden. Campfires are blazing in Sweden to keep themselves warm. All around the stages, lots of enthusiastic fans have been out since, some of them since uh, six o'clock in the morning. But they have been given a fantastic treat of spectacular driving. Many rally pundits say, unless you've seen a snow rally, you've really not seen a rally car in its best. And this man certainly has done an impressive job throughout the day. Using a little bit of time to lap for her, but uh, ended up still putting in a very solid time on the snow. Again, you can see that very heavy braking technique used to try and get those studs to dig in and help them with braking. That was perhaps a problem that Solberg mentioned earlier that he couldn't get enough grip in the front of the car when he was braking. Seem to be affecting a lot of drivers. Remember, they have to run on the road sections and the tyres they've chosen for the stages. So if they're running on snow on the stage, but running on a, a clearer road on the road sections and very, very long road sections here in Sweden. Something in the region of 600 k's throughout day two. That could have a very significant effect. A lot of the drivers, in fact, find themselves trying to run almost on the hard shoulder to on the edge of the road to try and find some snow and ice to drive in. 5.7 seconds down though from the fastest time was Danny Sordo. 
Sebastian Loeb, though, is not finished yet. Road position seems to be significant for the second run through the stages on day two. Conscious of having those rallies in the middle of the year last year, we had the, some problems, had some DNFs, had some technical issues, had some legal problems with uh, disqualification as well. So conscious of getting points early on for this man, the pace just seems to be getting stronger and stronger as they go into the final proper stage of the day, stage eight, super special back at Carlston, where they started on the Thursday night just to finish off, but this is the first, last of the open stages out in the forests. Has been attacking massively at this second part of the day. Those changes you talked about in setup seem to have worked brilliantly for him. As does this attacking approach, he said he couldn't wait for the season to start. As soon as he finished Rally GB, at the end of 2009, he wanted to get rallying again. Watch just how quick some of these sections are. <laughs> Ja vasen oikee koo aukee yli nypyn, kaheksan, huomio huomio, oikee vasen eri aukee yli nypyn, jarru viis, oikee hidas, jarru kaks, vasen hidas, tiukka, kirra vähän käännä, seitsemän, oikee hidas, kuus, huomio huomio, vasen koo, jarru viis, oikee hidas, risteys tiukka, neljä, pirun pitkä vasen hidas aukee, ja kirra vähän, varo ulko, 130. Nyt hana se on hidastellut siellä, niin tää on hyvä. Vasen täys yli nypyn, keskeltä 120. Nyppy vasen laita, jarru kuus, pirun pitkä oikee, hidas yli nypyn. 150. Vasen oikee, koo menee ja kirraa vähän. Jarru kolme, vasen nopee, käännä. 8. Pitkä vasen nopee, menee. Sata, huomio, huomio, lyhyt oikee loiva. 120, oikee tosi hidas, mene ja käännä. Neljä, oikee nopee, kivi sisällä kierrä, jarru kaks, vasen hidas. 180 yli. Hän lyhyt oikee eri, aukee yli nypy seitsemän, huomio, huomio, lyhyt oikee jarru kolme, pitkä vasen hidas, aukee yli nypyn. Viisi. Ja vasen hidas, maali, sata. Ainakin tuo piti tarkoittaa tuon flat out sitä, että se on hidastelussa. So it was fastest for Irvin on the stage by 3.3 seconds. This is what it means to the overall leaderboard. At the end of the day, after the super special, this is. At the end of the day, Irvin and Loeb, Sordo, Latvala, 31 seconds cover the top four. Problems. Uh, just doing what I can, and uh, I don't like driving in Sweden when it's a big, big ruts. Uh, I don't find a feeling, and maybe I clean a bit. I don't know, but I'm not as fast as Miko, so I lost a lot in the first stage. Then the two other stages were a bit, a bit better. Uh, it was not big ruts, just a bit of gravel. Then in this condition, it's okay. So no, no special problem, just uh, one bad stage for me. Miko didn't put pull tactics at the end of that stage. Does that put you in a better position for tomorrow? I don't know because I, in the first loop, it was really good to be first on the road, so I don't think it will be any problem for him. Um, second loop, I don't know if it's me or the condition, so or the car. I don't know. So we'll see tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. It just worked worked out fine, and uh, I was happy that I found a good setup on the third stage in the morning, and then I just carried on like like that, but. Conditions were very difficult. It was really very deep ruts on the ice in the first stage and lots of loose snow on, on side, so uh, it was very difficult. Why do you think Seb found it harder in those conditions than you? I don't know, difficult to say, but I'm happy it, it's working for us. But of course, it's, it's very easy to make a mistake and you have to be like take risks all the time. There's so many breakings that you don't have any idea if it's going to stop for the corner or not, so 
We've been lucky today as well. Danny, are you satisfied with your performance today? No, <laughs> yes. No, I think it's, it's not, not bad, no? 11 seconds behind uh, uh, Miko and um, two or three seconds behind uh, Sebastian, not bad. And the, also, the performance was really, really good. I am really happy with the car. My driving was really bad in the beginning. It was no confidence and no, no flow at all. After the service, quite okay, but we always shoot one junction, so the time was not good. Next one, we had a stop, electrical problem or something for 30 minutes. The last one started to be okay uh, time-wise, uh, the last just before here now. Are you having fun though? Not so far, not at all, but uh, maybe tomorrow. Pater, explain to me what happened in stage five. Well, it's a lot of things. We were actually up to second fastest before I went off the road. I just had an understeer. It's my my fault. Trying a little bit hard, and uh, and after that, I uh, Matthew, uh, I went straight in the junction, and Matthew passed me, and then I came over crest after that, and he was going straight in the junction, and I almost hit him. Ah, uh, well, I actually touched him with my back end, and I went uh, beside him. And uh, also a lot of things happening, so lost six minutes or something. So, what can we do? Uh, it's been okay, apart from the uh, little little thing in the second last stage where we stuck when we couldn't see you, and we stuck in the snow but Are you pleased with your pace apart from that? No, I mean for sure we. It would be nice to be faster, but uh, I mean it's hard to compare it to the guys that has done it for many years. So I mean, some stages we can go fine, and uh, the afternoon the car has been better. But and how are you working with pace notes? Oh, it's okay. I mean, for sure there's a lot to learn and a lot to gain on the speed wise, but uh, it, it, it's really we need time to learn it. So. so this is what the next stage will look like. The next set of stages going through stages nine. 216 total of 118 k's, 581 k's of road sections. Latvala looking very quick. Soro's been impressive. Battle will probably be between Loeb and Hirvonen, as it was for most of last year. One way or another, the action has been superb on the opening day of the World Rally Championship from Sweden. Motors TV will bring you all the action from day two. Simon Hill, thanks for joining us.